Jamie travels back in time to her mother's high school days and gym class. To her astonishment, her young mother is so mean that she throws a ball and knocks her over. Get off the court, loser! After class, Jamie reaches out to say hello to her mother. However, her mother tells her to get lost. Unlike the nice and quiet woman she remembered, frustrated, Jamie goes to her father. To her horror, her big-bellied, funny father is so strong and seductive in his youth and he is dating her mother's friend, Tiffany. Jamie gets to her mother and warns her that Tiffany is in danger tonight. But no one believes her death warning. So Jamie goes off on her own to find Tiffany. She has to stop Tiffany from dying tonight. Otherwise, in 35 years, she'll lose her mother. In 2023, on Halloween, 51-year-old Pam opens the door to give out candy to the kids. But a man in a mask pulls out a knife and breaks into her home. Pam isn't shocked by his attack because she's been waiting for this day to come for 35 years. She's been practicing self-defense and hiding weapons in her home for years. Ever since three of her friends were killed, she is supposed to be strong enough to repel the enemy. But she is still no match for the treacherous trickster. The killer pretends to be escaping and then bursts through the door behind her, launching a sneak attack. Pam ends up in the foyer with 16 stab wounds. Jamie cries in her room, in deep remorse, if she hadn't insisted on going out to the concert, and dad had driven her there for fear of her safety. Mom wouldn't have been left home alone. The serial killer wouldn't have had the chance to attack her mom. 35 years ago, three of Pam's friends were murdered. All of them, without exception, were stabbed 16 times when they were 16. It's said that the killer wore all black and a creepy mask. They called him the Sweet 16 Killer. What's strange is that after three murders, he vanished into thin air. The police have been searching for him for 35 years, but they haven't found any clues. But it boosted the town's tourism business. Every Halloween, people come dressed as Sweet 16 Killer to visit the crime scene. Chris becomes a guide for the murder tour. He earns some attention by producing a podcast about Sweet 16 Killer. The day after the murder, Chris goes to Jamie. He hands her a note that says, You're next. One day, Chris says her mother got it after the third murder. Her mother told him because she knew he was concerned about the serial killers and wanted his help in finding the killer. Knowing that her mother had lived in fear her whole life, Jamie gets angry and plans to get revenge. She goes to the amusement park and finds her friend Amelia, asking for her help in catching the Sweet 16 killer. Just when she is determined not to let her mother's lifelong tormentor go unpunished, that man appears. Sweet 16 killer begins to hunt her down. She hides in a time machine, which Amelia invented, and it was designed and made by Amelia with reference to her mother's notes. Amelia had experimented with it many times in the past, but she couldn't get it to work. This time, it works when Jamie taps the buttons in panic. At the sound, the killer rips down the curtain and finds her, and Jamie, who has been learning self-defense since she was born, isn't easily subdued. In the struggle, his knife misses and hits the control panel. Then a magnetic field rises up, shielding her from all harm. When Jamie recovers her composure, she opens the curtain. The desolate outside looks completely changed. The people's clothes and the music playing on the radio are very different from what's popular in 2023. Upon questioning, she realizes she's traveled back to 1987, the day of the first murder. If she could stop Sweet 16 Killer from killing in the first place, her mom would still be alive. So she hitchhikes to her mother's high school, disguised as an exchange student from Canada. Since the internet isn't very advanced in this day and age, the teacher doesn't need to verify any of her information. She gives Jamie a class schedule and enrolls her. Jamie reluctantly changes into her tight, short pants for gym class. When she sees her mother's three murdered friends, she feels like she's dreaming. But a ball thrown by her mother soon brings her to her senses. It's hard for her to believe that her mother, who was always nice and elegant, could be so fierce at 16. Her beautiful young mother, Pam, ignores her and even ostracizes her. Hablas espanol? Está bien. Vete a la mire, more. She had no choice but to go to the police and report that there will be a murder tonight. She gives the sheriff the sticker she took in the time machine with the masked man in it. But the cops think she's playing a prank. Seeing that the police won't help, Jamie plans to find the person who believes in the theory of time travel and time machines. She goes to science class and finds Lauren, her friend Amelia's mother, slash, the original designer of the time machine she's traveling in. Jamie explains to her that she's from the future, and about her mother and the crimes of serial killers. The whimsical Lauren quickly accepts that she is a time traveler. Jamie takes her to an amusement park and shows her the time machine. At Jamie's request, she sets about repairing the machine so that it can send her back to the future. At night, Jamie takes her to a party where murder is about to take place, but they don't have an invitation and are turned away. So they go to the backyard and plan to climb over the wall. With Doug's give them a boost, the two girls sneak into the party. Jamie unexpectedly sees her father, Blake, in all his handsome, youthful glory. But what makes her scream in horror is the fact that her father and her mother's friend, Tiffany, are kissing. 
She read the news on her cell phone and is convinced that Tiffany was the first victim. She goes to her mother and two of her other friends, telling them that Tiffany's in danger. She asks them not to leave Tiffany alone. But they don't believe her, and they're mean to her. With the time of death approaching, Jamie has to go searching for Tiffany on her own. Tiffany was just having a huge fight with her boyfriend and now she is making out with another man on the waterbed. She goes to the bathroom halfway and comes back to find that the man is no longer on the bed. Instead, a man in a mask comes out of the closet. Tiffany thinks it's a special fetish she's playing with and doesn't pay much attention to it. Suddenly, the man pulls out a knife and starts waving it around to kill. By the time Jamie kicks in the door and finds her, Tiffany was stabbed 16 times and her heart stopped. When the police arrive at the crime scene, they suspect Jamie of the crime. After all, there had never been a crime in this town before. Jamie had foretold the tragedy during the day and seemed to know something about it. Her mother comes forward to prove her innocence, saying she was only trying to protect Tiffany. After the police left, everyone quickly withdrew. Pam breaks down in tears and asks Jamie how she knew her friend was in danger. Jamie knows she doesn't believe in time travel, so he uses magic to convince her. Jamie says she's psychic and had a vision that Pam and three of her friends would get murdered. She then pulls out the crystal that Pam will give her in 30 plus years and convinces her to join her in stopping the rest. Pam invites them both to her house. That's when Jamie figures out why her grandmother never comes to visit. Her mother treats her grandmother badly, just as she will treat her mother in the future. During the conversation, Pam lists some people who might hate her and her friends. Jamie accidentally reveals that the person Pam will marry is Blake. Pam is overjoyed. She's always had a crush on Blake, but since he's Tiffany's boyfriend, she's never done anything about it. Now that Tiffany's dead, she can break the girl code without any worries. The next day, Pam comes to school and hits on Blake. Jamie is very worried about this. Because in the normal pace of the future, her parents were supposed to fall in love in college. But now they're dating in high school because of something she said. Lauren reassures her that she's not going away, but everything is different. If her parents don't end up getting married and having kids, she'll just basically have no life to go home to. Frustrated, she grabs the note out of her pocket that says her mother is the next victim. She goes to class and sees Lurch, her classmate, scribbling in his notebook. His handwriting is almost identical to the one on the note. After questioning the other three, she learns that Lurch often gets into fights. That puts Lurch on her list of suspects. Toward evening, the three drive her to a cabin in the woods. Jamie suddenly gets anxious. Because she recognizes it as the place where the second victim, Marissa, died. She urges them to leave. But Black arrives with two other people. Seeing that they won't cancel the party, Jamie has to stay. She keeps a watchful eye on them and protects them while she's busy trying to break up her parents. They couldn't stand her being such a party pooper, so they lock her out. For their safety, Jamie checks to make sure all the exits are locked. Soon an open window catches her attention. She climbs up and sees the killer coming out of a dark room. She screams, attracting the attention of her parents. The killer decides to abandon the search for Marissa and turns the knife on Heather instead. Blake rushes out to fight the killer but is stabbed in the chest. Pam takes a plate and hits him with it, but is knocked unconscious. In the end, the family fights back and the killer escapes. But their efforts fail to save Heather, who loses her breath after being stabbed 16 times. At the police station, Pam gives the sheriff a napkin stained with the killer's blood. She wants them to use DNA to find the killer. But this is 1987, and DNA testing isn't widely used in criminal investigations. The sheriff just throws away the most important clue. Jamie returns to school disappointed. She realizes she's changed the order of their deaths, but not the end, and her parents are too busy falling in love to give her a moment's attention. Then the scary-looking Lurch enters her sight, driving alone. So she plans to investigate this legendarily violent man. She enters the trunk of Lurch's car and searches it for a body. It turns out Lurch is just a gaming nerd. He couldn't even beat her, let alone kill so many people. As they talk, Doug, the hall monitor, shows up. Lurch suggests that they go inside because it's not safe out there. Doug, however, says in a relaxed manner that you're safe with me. I've been training in karate for eight years. After class, Jamie comes to the playground to ask Lauren about the repairs to the time machine. Her cell phone battery is currently at 33. If she doesn't travel to the future before it runs out, she'll be stuck here forever. Lauren says she can hijack the live broadcast signal from the amusement park, but the time machine is still missing a power button that generates a ton of force, enough to basically disrupt gravity. So they enter the quantum drop and take over the device to use as a generator. But Jamie doesn't want to go back until she's caught the killer. So she gathers everyone at the amusement park and comes up with a plan to capture him. She gives Marissa a rape alarm and tells her to be the bait. Once the masked man appears, they'll rush out and capture him. When the sun goes down, Marissa enters the dollhouse of horrors. The rest of the team dresses up as the Grim Reaper or the Devil and ambushes the surrounding area. 
As expected, the masked man follows her in. Jamie finds the right moment to lure him into a room. Everyone rushes out instantly with weapons. When he isn't paying attention, a scythe pierces his chest. Jamie takes off the mask and finds that the killer is Doug, who practiced karate. Around his neck is a locket containing a picture of Fat Trish. Only then do they realize why Doug wants to kill them. It turns out that Fat Trish was Doug's girlfriend and had been teased by them. Last summer, there were rumors that Fat Trish was having an affair with the athletic trainer. They wanted to know if it was true. So they pretended to be friends with Trish, got her drunk and locked her up. Though Trish escaped, she eventually died when she crashed into a tree while driving under the influence. Doug was the one who stabbed everyone 16 times to avenge his 16-year-old girlfriend. Jamie never imagined his mother to be such a hypocritical monster. Marissa testifies that Pam didn't know anything about it. Because Pam had a fight with Tiffany last summer and hadn't spoken to them in months. And just when everyone thinks it's over, Marissa gets her neck cut off. Everyone is in a state of panic. Didn't the serial killer fall to the ground and lose his breath? Why is there another one in a mask? Jamie immediately recognizes him as coming from 35 years later. The dirty mark on his mask was made by her. It turns out that this masked man knocked Amelia out while she was fixing the time machine in 2023. He traveled back in time to 1987 to commit the crime. This time his target is Jamie. Jamie quickly runs into the time machine. Lauren sets the time for her to go back to the future to save her mother. Jamie must leave now or she'll be stuck here forever. However, the masked man runs in before the hatch closes. Lauren activates the switch and jumps out. Pam, on the other hand, is brave enough to break in. She tries to stall him and escort Jamie out. As the time machine spins at high speed, mother and daughter are thrown against the wall by the force of gravity. The masked man stabs Pam in the stomach. Jamie opens the hatch. The wind sucks her out and it destroys his mask. It turns out that this time-traveling killer is none other than Chris. His father is a brilliant journalist who won the Pulitzer Prize. But his father only cared about his career, not him. So Chris travels back in time to eliminate his father and make sure he doesn't have to face such a cold father in the future. As the town went crime-free for 35 years, people became less and less interested in him. To make a name for himself, he killed Pam on Halloween, mimicking the masked man's execution so that people would mistakenly think Sweet 16 Killer was back and keep following his podcast. Maybe one day he'll win a Pulitzer Prize. Just when he thinks he's the ultimate winner, Jamie takes him out with a nail gun. Jamie then takes the time machine and travels to 2023. And there, her mother is still alive and in deep love with her father. Amelia is still her best friend. Lauren is a bioengineer. She has been waiting 35 years for Jamie to return. Now she's convinced that her time machine invention is a success but she explains to Jamie that she made a mistake when she set the time, and it made everything different. For example, in this timeline, Jamie has a 34-year-old brother, because she wasn't able to stop her parents from falling in love and having a baby in high school. And the name Jamie was used to name her brother, and she got named Colette. Everyone's fate has changed. Most importantly, Chris in this timeline isn't dead. He was traumatized by the death of his father on the air. Now he's in a monastery in India. This is Rainbow Movie. If there's a movie you'd like to watch, feel free to leave a comment and let me know. Let's watch a movie together and experience something different. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.